Hi everyone, great to be here. Uh, I would love to share about my last venture, Company DNA, and we are building an AI-powered COO and Chief Strategy Officer. So I would love to introduce myself first. I sold my first company to Snapchat, my last company to Gusto. I worked in Gusto for three and a half years and launched many, many products there. And I, in my life, in remote team, we had 2,000 customers. I talked with 2,000 customers. In Gusto, I talked with 1,000 small businesses in my life. And I am part of the Silicon Valley community. Like I invest in 150 companies, uh, join five accelerators, I'm part of other exited founder groups. I talk with founders every single day in my life. And when I hear them, I know their heart, I know their problems, I know what they want to do. So we design, um, we build company DNA in a way that it helps founders and other team members to help them on how to run their company. So it can help you to give your strategic decision, help you to prioritize your key initiatives, uh, help you to optimize your resources. Let's say you want to fire three people, it will instantly tell you which three people you should fire. If you want to increase your revenue 10%, it will find you which kind of customers you should go after or what kind of things you can do. If you have miscommunication pro problems with your cross function, it can help you to find that as well. It looks like this. So you, everyone has a dashboard. Uh, you go there, you define what you need, what is your most important things that you care about in your day life. Let's say it's your MRR, your burn rate, and your other things. And the chief, our AI, will tell you what you need to do to improve it. So how we doing it is very interesting. We took a, a Guan foundational model from Alibaba and modify it with uh, our style of decision making and train it with all the Silicon Valley playbooks we find, founder insight, founder interviews, uh, Paul Graham essays, everything you can find online in high quality of how Silicon Valley companies grow, we put it there. Then we have the, in our screens, we, there's a section, you connect all your apps of your company like Notion, Slack, GitLab, whatever you use, and our AI start to build a new fine-tuned model just specific for your company, and you can just ask anything to your company and get help on nearly everything. We give you a phone number. Let's say you are driving your Tesla, you can call the company and ask anything about your company. Or you get a Zoom bot, Slack bot, and you can chat on the dashboard as well. Our team, they worked in unicorns, built products at scale, and our engineering team are all defense industry. We have a girl who worked on the sixth, fifth generation unbanded fire jet and unmanded AC vehicle, and it's all genius AI people uh, building this. Thank you. Thanks for your pitch. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. All righty, yeah. here's what's some questions. I can start. I mean, I work with strategy, I can very much relate to it, so it's super yeah. exciting. Um, but what's the role of culture building? How much is that taken into account? Because like, specifically in early stage startups, for example, um, Yes, you can look at all kind of metrics, and um, it is really important, absolutely, but like uh, what I've seen in the growth phase of Google when I was involved, the culture aspect actually was really, really important to, to make a business grow. Is there any way how you can measure that, include that? Yeah, it's in early stage startups, if you are growing so fast, culture is everything. Like, you have the talent, but if you make the talent super motivated, yeah. that's your secret weapon, right? So we take the Zoom calls, we understand the founder culture, and we try to understand that culture, and try to implement that more than the, uh, the number element. Yeah. So it's all about how to motivate team members yeah. to, work fat, to work more, actually. Yeah. Where's your company based? At the classical Delaware. Where? Delaware. OK. It, if I'm a European corporate, why should I give sensitive data into your engine, into your model? What, what does, that, does that do to me? I mean, if you, I looked at the numbers uh, the, the, which you're targeting um, in, in Europe, data protection, security, whatsoever. How do you handle that? So we have a feature uh, that the data lives on your platform. We don't need to access your data. Uh, you have a chance to put it on your own Amazon, and we can deploy it to your own Amazon as well. 
Like we are not after your data. How about the trained? Output? The trained, we do it on your own VPC, on your own network. We can do that. Okay. What's the typical customer look like? Describe a customer you, you're talking Yeah, so my expertise is around 100 people teams uh, growing fast, uh, mostly remote, uh, mostly SaaS. Uh, and around doing uh, 1 million ARR and going to 3, 4 million ARR. Uh, and then the problem starts, okay, how are they going to go to 10 million ARR? That's my perfect customer. Industry agnostic? Uh, right now, just SaaS, because we train it's, it with the okay. SaaS data. You said that. Yeah. How do you monetize? Uh, we charge $99 per uh, seat. Per seat per yeah. month? Or per week. month. And... Uh, the, the, the current models are not cheap enough to train 4,000 people, companies yet. It needs to get cheaper. All right, we've got 15 seconds. Any last questions? No, I think we're good. Thank you so much. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Thank you.